in the courtroom, we see Donald Trump for who he is. He's been convicted of 34 felonies, found liable for sexual assault, and he committed financial fraud. Meanwhile, Joe Biden's been working, lowering health care costs and making big corporations pay their fair share. This election is between a convicted criminal who's only out for himself and a president who's fighting for your family. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. The Biden campaign is going there. Just days before the first presidential debate, the campaign released its sharpest attack ad yet, calling Donald Trump a convicted criminal. Joining us now is political strategist and former campaign manager for Joe Walsh 2020, Lucy Caldwell, and MSNBC political analyst, former Senator Claire McCaskill. Greetings. Hi. So what do you think about that, Senator McCaskill? I mean, there's been a lot of sort of hand-wringing about was the Biden campaign sufficiently going after Donald Trump on the question of his criminality? There it is in a brand new ad. Yeah, I, I, I think stating what has happened in our court system is really important. I also think what's really important that the Biden campaign has done is the president himself has criticized Donald Trump, not as much for his behavior, but before his for his attack on the system, for his attack on those jurors, for his all-out assault on every institution in America that separates us from folks who have dictators and no freedoms. Um, the rule of law, our, the appropriate use of our military, uh, you know, our court system where judges are making decisions based on the law and not on politics. That's what Donald Trump is trying to destroy right now. So yes, I think it's good they're going after him as a felon. I think that's great. But I think it's very important to keep reminding people um, first, that Donald Trump only fights for himself, and anything mm. he does with anyone is transactional to help him, not you. I mean, even the corporate tax break he promised to all the CEOs the other day, that was, he, he did one with the oil companies where he said, give me a billion dollars and I'll take care of you when I get in office. Um, this is all about what he can do for himself. That's important, but it's also very important to remind people that he has no respect for the things that make us America and make us the kind of country that people want to come to to live because they know their freedoms will be protected. Lucy, I, th I think Claire makes a, a very important point in, in the messaging uh, sphere here because you do have uh, these, these uh, narratives that have been perpetuated by the, the Trump orbit uh, for some time. Lindsey Graham uh, is taking the new level up on that. Let's take a listen to what he has to say about Joe Biden as the real felon. Next time you hear the word felon, in this election, I think the felon in this election is Joe Biden. What he's doing to the country is criminal. So you have it, it, it is just mind numbingly stupid what he just said, um, because what you're saying, I have a difference with his policies That's somehow criminal and therefore he's a felon. Donald Trump was convicted by 12 of his peers in a New York courtroom. Yes. 34 times. Help us narratively explain to folks why they should take the fog out of their eyes and understand the difference between these two when they're looking at assessing which of these two men not as a felon, but should be president of the United States. Well, the transmogrification of Lindsey Graham going from 2016 being a guy who wouldn't even say that he would vote for Donald Trump. He was saying Donald Trump was unfit. He was saying, I cannot tick the box for Donald J. Trump to Lindsey Graham talking about Joe Biden as a person. He said, if you can't support Joe Biden, if you don't like Joe Biden as a man, there's something wrong with you. He talked about a deep bond to Joe Biden. He talked about talking with Joe Biden about Bo Biden. He said, you know, Bo is Joe's soul. This was a man who had a deep connection to Joe Biden and respected him and rep represented what we want people to be able to talk about each other in a nonpartisan way. Now you see that Lindsey Graham has just gone all in on Trumpism. And I think it reflects that we often talk about this election cycle as one man. We talk about it as Donald Trump. We need to make sure to defeat Donald Trump. Lindsey Graham is not up for re-election this cycle. We need 
need to defeat all of them. They are all part of this same problem. All of the entities, not just the RNC, the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Mm -hmm. These are all part of the work. And to the point about the convicted felon language, yes, there is no equivalency between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, just like there was no equivalency when the Republican Congress was trying to force an impeachment of a, of a Biden administration official. There is no equivalency to the president's son having a challenge with his own personal life that has resulted in, in also a conviction, and a president, a sitting president of the United States, committing felony after felony, and that's to say nothing of the many felonies that he is still on trial for. Yeah. Mm. I mean, Claire, the Politico talked about, had this really good article that detailed why the Biden campaign finally decided, you know, to go in on um, Donald Trump about his New York verdict on Tuesday. And um, they write, inside the Biden campaign, officials cast the ad, this ad that we just played, part of a $50 million um, June ad buy in battleground states as part of an ongoing effort to frame the election around a character contrast between the two candidates. Trump's felony connection convictions, they argue, are proof of their larger message that he is out for himself. They also point to the latter half of the ad when they contrasted Biden as working for voters to lower health care costs. I think this really illustrates that point that you are making, and it builds off what Lucy just said. I, and, and I just also want to note, I have, I, I, I know some people who are convicted felons, okay? It is not just, the, the issue with Donald Trump is is what he has been charged with doing, not just in this case, but the other cases that we previously discussed that well, are not, obviously, not making it to, uh, you know, a jury in this, this go-round, given the <laughs> delays in the system. But it is for voters, um, Senator, Claire, I always talk about, call her Claire, I got to call her Senator, my mama <laughs> raised me right. For voters, it is, it is not just about what Donald Trump has done previously, but what he would do, but also what Joe Biden is going to do. And so this ca the campaign, I think, is right to also talk about what it means for the people, because that also weighs into, you know, what they do when they go to the ballot box, right? Yeah, I, I think uh, in many, um, you know, this is a weird campaign in so many ways. First of all, can we just put on the table how weird it is that about half of America thinks it would be okay for Donald Trump to be president again. I mean, mm. hard to wrap your arms around that one. But the other thing that's weird about this is we really have two incumbents. We have somebody who claims he's still an incumbent and certainly was president, and then we have a current president. So we really have two presidencies here. And I think what the Biden campaign has to do, we have young voters that don't remember that much about the Trump administration. You know, they were they were not even paying attention four years ago. So we've got to contrast that. The Biden people have to contrast everything. Contrast character, contrast job creation, contrast chaos versus normalcy, contrast protecting our allies around the world versus wanting to be besties with the worst horrible dictators. I mean, leaders that kill their own family members for power. I mean, this is the contrast that has to happen. There can be no, you know, ad, oh, I want to introduce you to Joe Biden and how great he is, or I want to tell you how terrible Donald Trump is. There has to be that contrast mm -hmm. in every single message. And if they do that, those voters who are disengaged right now, they will, in fact, especially in those battleground states, they're going to be bombarded with these contrasting messages they will decide that they want character and normalcy as opposed to chaos and the most selfish man that ever walked the planet. Mm. Mm -mm -mm.